Topic 4. Market Entry Strategies Once a company has selected its target market or target markets, it will need to decide how best to enter each market. There are four main foreign market entry strategies. Indirect exporting involves the least amount of investment and risk for the exporter. This is because the responsibility for international marketing largely rests with one or other category of middleman. Companies which are starting out in exports frequently and sensibly follow the indirect exporting route. A company which engages in indirect exporting sells consignments of its products to a trading house or distributor based in the local market, which in turn on sells the product concerned to customers in foreign markets. The trading house or distributor shoulders the responsibility for marketing, selling and transporting the goods abroad, and also carries any payment and currency exchange risk. As the local trading house or distributor assumes full ownership of the goods prior to their being shipped to a foreign destination, the transaction, where the exporting company is concerned, is the equivalent of a domestic sale. Direct exporting entails much greater involvement, risk and cost to the supplier than indirect exporting. In return, however, it enables the company to acquire practical experience in the export process and to promote its own brand in foreign markets. It also has the potential to be much more profitable than indirect exporting. In order to engage in direct exporting, you will need to establish an export unit or department to handle all or part of the export process for you. The responsibilities of this unit would depend on how you choose to structure your export operation. You may require the export unit to take on the entire export process. This would involve soliciting inquiries and orders from potential customers or end users in the foreign market, often with the assistance of local or foreign commission agents, preparing and ensuring goods for export, effecting customs clearance and international delivery, and seeing to it that your company gets paid for goods sold. On the other hand, should you be thinking of establishing a sales office in a particular foreign market, the export unit would merely process customer orders passed onto it by the sales office. The sales office might also perform functions such as primary marketing research, product promotion, warehousing and after-sales servicing, and or the provision of technical support in the foreign market. Finally, the export unit might end up selling consignments of goods against orders received to foreign-based trading houses or distributors, which in turn would sell them to customers in foreign markets. While in these circumstances, the export unit would still have to perform the export logistics function. It would not have to concern itself with the identification of customers or end users, nor with the delivery of products directly to them. Another option for gaining entry into a foreign market is to conclude a joint venture agreement with a foreign national. This is known as joint venturing. Licensing and franchising, for example, are both well-known joint venture arrangements and are used extensively in an international context. Under a licensing arrangement, one organization permits another to use its manufacturing process, trademark, copyright, technical know-how, or other item of value in exchange for a fee or royalty. Pringles chips and Gerber's baby food are examples of products made in South Africa under license to the foreign owners of the brands. Under a franchise arrangement, a parent company grants another independent entity the right to use the parent company's trademark and logo, products, packaging and business methodology in exchange for a fee. Examples of international franchises operating in SACUM countries are Pizza Hut, the Hilton Hotel Group and The Body Shop. An ambitious option and one which should only be considered by organizations with significant financial resources and a thorough understanding of the international business environment is foreign direct investment, frequently referred to as FDI. FDI usually involves the investment by a local company in foreign-based assembly or manufacturing facilities or service operations. Wooltrue, Sasol, MTN and Standard Bank are all examples of South African companies which have invested in commercial operations of one sort or another in other countries, 